The year is almost over and uh, yeah, yeah, you know the drill. But I want to look back at some of the spicy things 2023 entailed, especially when it comes to sim racing. Because in terms of drama, there sure was quite a bit and with a wide variety of flavors as well. If you want to taste the world of sim racing scandals and learn which esports series fumbled the bag more than ever predicted, stay tuned. And with that, Welcome back to Overtake. I have a thing for Hollywood thrillers, especially when they happen in an uncommon setting, like that of sim racing. While our community is often known for its focus on the more practical things of driving, sometimes a story or two sneak into the constant struggle for superior lap times. And that's exactly where we will start. Sportsmanship is a difficult topic in this space, not because so many people are inconsiderate numbskulls, but rather because the enforcement of rules to keep it is tough. It is very hard to keep someone nice and respectful without having ultra strict rules that would void any fun from racing. You kind of have to hope people act decently. That's why you may have experienced the odd idiot in your lobby that tries to slip through the cracks of the safety rating system Bruh. by using dirty tricks. But it hits different when done on the highest level of virtual competition and not in some random sim racing lobby. The Williams esports team made unfortunate headlines at the start of 2023 after competing in the top split of the IRA Racing Daytona 24 hours. The event had a handful of capable drivers and that's what the Williams representatives seemed to think as well. With no live stewarding, it was mighty easy to avoid the wary eyes of the public by hiding some of your wrongdoings with an odd camera perspective. So when the clearly forbidden apron was used by the Williams as way to gain three tenths a lap and cash in pole position, the live audience was left unaware, while the drivers in the race knew immediately. They really crossed the line there there, huh? Sorry. But the shenanigans wouldn't stop there. During the race, blue flags were repeatedly ignored by lap Williams cars in order to either help their teammates catch up or waste time for following vehicles. Even worse, one Williams car would repeatedly pit and wait at the exit to block other competitors. This was all summarized in Pablo G's video on the topic, who explains this in depth and of course raced in the same race as well. So take a look over there if you want to know the full story behind it. So why is it such a big deal? Can't you just find this stuff out easily and then ban the corresponding drivers afterwards? On that note, the team apparently never got formal punishments for their misdeeds. The only action taken was the driver who set the infamous obscured pole lap did get a ban from iRacing. Nevertheless, the fact still remains that the event ended up being ruined for some of the participating drivers. And that by people representing an honorable racing org. The more mind-boggling thing is that exactly. Competition always shows people's worst colors but to act in such a manner while fully knowing you have a name that stands for something is not fathomable for me. Williams did end up releasing a statement which sounded a lot like this. In the end, what happened, happened. Many in the community didn't take it lightly, however, and many would eventually even call this cheating entirely. And on that topic... Cheating has been a center point of the sim racing drama in 2023 as well. While it has been super hard to confirm whether someone is cheating in a racing game or not, there were some dubious situations which did end up prompting big responses. The main point of contention was brought up on the F1 games. The yearly releases feature some very lively competition with major bucks involved. So if anyone would find ways to dribble past the anti-cheat systems in place, it would be here. And we got some juicy ones in this category. Most famously, Alvaro Careton, once again a Williams esports driver. And you could say he had a little slip up in a race of his, showing a full folder with exploits, cheat engine and the whole nine yards. While one would call this clear evidence that something like this was used in order to gain an advantage, the Spanish driver's explanation which followed was spectacular. The Spaniard claimed that he was in cahoots with Codemasters and EA in order to expose the cheats used in game and help the authorities of the devs clean up the community. While many believed the story after it got credibility by former F1 esports champion Jarno Opmer, it is still not confirmed that such an agreement ever actually existed between Codemasters and certain drivers. No mention of it anywhere. And it also doesn't really explain why the folder was open during an esports race for Kariton. Very strange. And it didn't help that this topic just slipped out of people's consciousness after a few weeks. 
Prior to Kariton accidentally showing his files, Opmer, who came to his defense, had been making accusations towards another driver in the community. For many months, the two-time series champion had been very vocal in how he felt about the 2022 F1 Esports top rookie, Thomas Ronhar, a driver many believed to be using some form of cheat to boost his grip and performance. After a race on the Barcelona track, Opmer and his reaction heavily imply there is something fishy going on. I'm very close to saying something. Not much to talk about. I drove my best race ever just to barely stay in the rest. Hold it. Yeah, yeah, I've hold it in for the past half year. So is the rest of the grid. There may have been a lot of damning video evidence showing Ronhar being able to take certain corners with more stability than his competitors, but any official explanation was not given, and the allegations kind of lingered on as the year went by, leaving Ronhar exposed to the aftermath. The reason this topic is even as big as it is, is F1 Esports switched from LAN to exclusively remote ever since the start of COVID. So in theory, if there were drivers using cheats, it would be pretty much impossible for the organizers to monitor it. Fast forward this year, and with the series rebranded as F1 Sim Racing, it returned to being all LAN. And guess who won the season opening race in Sweden? None other than Ron Har himself, who won by nearly six seconds from his biggest accuser, Opmer. Afterwards, Opmer apologized for the allegations, but do we fully know if Ron Har was never using cheats at any point in time? No, of course not. And that's why it's such a big issue. Oh, and on the note of the F1 Sim Racing season opener, in terms of events, a very big scandal only recently materialized. F1 Esports, now known as F1 Sim Racing, is probably the biggest sim racing series in the world, or at least it was that. With many hundreds of thousands of hits on any given event, it sure seemed like the series was ready to headline yet another year of sim racing. Refreshingly, however, the organizers decided it was enough of the professionalism and went full on 2012 esports event with its drivers. For anyone wondering what I am talking about, about since it has been completely dark around F1 esports from official sources for the past 11 months, here is a small summary. Gfinity used to produce the F1 esports series, more or less very successfully. The production deal ended and F1 signed a new one with ESL, only kind of however. While this was going on, no communication or anything was put out, so most people who weren't involved backstage in some capacity didn't have a clue at what was going on. Now after an eternity of nothing, the first event was supposed to commence at Dreamhack Sweden. Again, all hush hush, with even the drivers joking around going to the Maldives since it was contractually still a bit wonky. Just how wonky the situation really was, however, is hard to grasp. The day of the actual event, it was revealed that the contract between F1 and ESL was not yet finalized and in some form of limbo. The event was even cancelled entirely, at least for a brief period of time, leaving teams and drivers guessing as to what was happening. While originally organized to host races on the Bahrain and Silverstone tracks, Dreamhack Winter only saw the singular run on Bahrain, and big names like Marcel Kiefer did not even compete at all. Another problem was an in-game issue, which had the equal performance feature for cars not working as intended. F1 Esports in all seasons prior, as well as the major independent F1 leagues, have the equal performance feature enabled, which will explain why a Haas can run it up at the front in these series. However, a lot of the independent leagues discovered not long after F1 23 launched that the cars, even on equal performance, had unequal tire wear. This was supposedly fixed in late June, but the issue still persisted with the equal performance feature. So for integrity's sake, the F1 Sim Racing series would use the spec cars that F1 game players would typically use in the My Team Career mode or ranked online races, which meant absolutely no variation in terms of performance and tire wear or any other potential factor. This prompted potential sponsors and trademark problems to be possible, creating irritations between F1 and ESL. Another point of contention seemed to be the price pool, which is still set for $750,000 and thus is still the biggest part of any yearly sim racing competition. Negotiations, however, did not seem to be finished as to the full budget of the year. Of course, this is all still unconfirmed and hard to verify because, as I mentioned, the F1 Esports PR team seems to be on an indefinite hiatus. Even when the event eventually pulled through, the stream was barely advertised, not shown to the core audience on YouTube, and overall looked like the byproduct rather than something unique created for the fans of esports. I don't think I have to tell you how sad this is, how far the series has fallen, 
Europe from its first on-site finals alongside the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. This is a sharp decline if I ever saw one. And apparently, this course is about to be the same moving forward. If these issues with F1 and ESL persist, it's anyone's guess how the series will look moving forward. And it looks like it will persist, seeing how the second event is already cancelled again. Anyway, whilst those guys continue to negotiate for the next 11 months, let's go to our final scandal, and that is one we can all feel right in our chest. We have to mention motorsport games and the complete shambles they are in. MSG has blasted onto the scene with big plans and huge announcements. Owning several of big licenses which had us racing fans dream of titles with much excitement. And they also bought Studio 397 which is the development studio behind R Factor 2. The facade seemed to slowly break away last year however, where the first problems revolving around the company arose. A complicated network of financial reports and transcribed investor calls indicated losses and non-sufficient cash reserves or in other words business bad if you want a better explanation than watching this video from ours truly champion joe from a year ago should tell you all you need to know however it all remains speculation in the meantime trailers as well as reveals followed by motorsport game titles which sent a strong sign of wanting to continue the projects and refuting the negative pr caused by their seeming financial woes as it turns out these reports held a daunting lot of truth as the company laid off a whopping 40% of its employees this year and also sold off the NASCAR license to iRacing in an attempt to restore some profitability. Unfortunately, a lot of cool projects got caught up in the crossfire, such as our friends over at Traction GG. This was not their only worry, however, as the most recent developments showed an even grimmer view. Both the BTCC and IndyCar revoked their license with MSG and the company also fears repeated delisting from the NASDAQ. So everything Thing is kind of burning down rapidly. While the future is uncertain for the publisher, it is safe to say it does not look good and even could have a ripple effect on future deals racing series tie with the virtual world. At this time, Motorsport Games Le Mans Ultimate is still planned for release, but no word at how ready it is has come out yet. But I am sure we will revisit this sooner rather than later. The saddest part of all of this is the many years of dev time that surely got put into interesting titles and is now completely gone unless picked up by another entity and i don't know who that could be it's in the game Never mind, they threw out their racing prowess as well. Yep, it's true. After years of expanding, Codemasters, so essentially EA, is facing a similar situation to MSG. An undisclosed number of employees are being laid off. So the titles of F1 and WRC will see some form of change moving forward. Maybe there is an industry problem on the horizon. Nevertheless, 2023 offered a lot more than just scandals. A lot more great moments, which are summarized in this video. So make sure to click that right now. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, cheerio.